Happy Sunday, Next Level Online. Today is going to be a great day of worshiping and connecting with God together. My name is Eric, and I'll be your guide for this online experience. Today happens to be your first time joining us. We don't want to miss the opportunity to let you know that we have been anticipating your arrival by praying for you. We're so glad that you've taken the first step to get connected with our church family. 
We believe that you are going to have a great experience today, and that's why we want to invite you to participate in something that we call the Stick for Three Challenge. The challenge is simple. Commit to stick around Next Level Online for three Sundays. That's it. We truly want to be a part of your spiritual journey, and the Stick for Three Challenge is a way for us to begin connecting with you and for you to connect with us. So you may be thinking, what do I need to do if I want to participate in that challenge? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you text the keyword welcome to the number on your screen, that will let us know that you are up for the challenge. And as a thank you, we'll send you a free ebook from our lead pastor all about building healthy relationships. Well, now it's time for us to join with our worship team for a time of singing, connecting with God. Would you take a moment to pray with me before we get started? Father, we are really grateful that we have this moment to join together so that we can worship you and so that we can grow in our faith. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will move powerfully uh, in this moment. Thank you for everyone that has joined and I pray that there will be a blessing for just participating in this moment. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, Next Level Church Online. We're so glad you decided to join us today. We're we'll begin singing and worshiping today. Our weapon in life is worship, and we want to sing out together. Let's sing this. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
thank you that we have victory in your son, Jesus. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, it's saying that we build our life upon the foundation of Jesus. You are so good to us.
it together. God, we thank you so much for the truth of what we just proclaimed and what we just sang. Lord, we thank you that the King is alive, that Jesus is alive, and that he has given us new life in him. Father, I pray that you would just give us the strength to trust in you and put all of our hope in you. Lord, we just thank you for this time we've had to sing and to worship together. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey there, everyone. My name's Brady. Welcome to Next Level Church, and thanks for worshiping with us today. At Next Level Church, our mission is to love Jesus, love people, and make a difference. We believe that Jesus' love has changed us for the better, and we want to share his love with others. During the months of February and March, Next Level Church will be assisting Port, a local emergency homeless winter shelter program. Through partnerships with many local churches and organizations, Port is able to serve the Hampton Roads community by providing shelter and food for the homeless during the especially difficult winter months. Next Level Church will be teaming up up with Port on both Sunday, February 14th and Wednesday, March 3rd at Temple Baptist Church. If you've signed up to serve on the 14th of February, please plan to be at Temple Baptist Church by 1 p.m. that day to begin volunteering. If you haven't already signed up, there's still time in making a difference. Visit nextlevelchurch.net slash make a difference to find out more on how you can show the love of Jesus and make a difference in our community this month. We're so glad you made a point to be here with us today to help us stay in the know. Please welcome Pastor Eric. You know, at Next Level, our time together extends beyond Sunday mornings. That's why we want to take a few moments to help you be in the know about what's happening during the week at Next Level. Well, family, since the pandemic hit last year, we began providing all of your kids programming online at nextlevelchurch.net slash kids, then available on demand. Our plan is to continue providing those resources so that you can help lead your kids toward Jesus. Now, to add to our online programming, we are ready to begin offering limited kids programming in person. So beginning February 21st, we will have in-person kids programming during the 11.30 a.m. service for kids ages 1 to 5. So this is our first step as we look forward to fully reopening kids programming in the future. So in the weeks to come, we will tell you how you can pre-register if you are interested in having your 1 to 5 year old join us during the 11.30 service. Well, speaking of families, today we are kicking off a brand new series called Our Imperfect Family, where we're going to be getting real about the health of our homes. Now, when it comes to families and homes, there is one thing that unites us all. Laundry. Hey, Rob. <sighs> yes. If you're not praying or reading the Bible, could you maybe come help me fold some laundry? Uh, I feel like all we ever do is put away laundry. It's because we do. Later that night. Uh, I feel like that took forever. Finally, we're done.
Well, we hope that that segment put a smile on your face. I believe this teaching series is going to be something that we all can relate to. That's why I want to encourage you to invite someone to join you in the next weeks as we discover how to navigate our imperfect families together. So let's get ready to jump into this new series as we join Pastor Rob in just a few moments. Now home is a lot of work, just plain work. When work at home is planned and organized for cooperation, there can usually be more time for leisure. I'm certainly in favor of those things. Leisure, fun. Who is it? Wouldn't we all be happier if we worked out a little system for living together in harmony? But how can we manage them? We'll have to work out the full answer together. Say, Mom, this well. Family problems can be solved through frank and friendly discussion, which points the way to a happy family life. You know, this is beginning to be quite a family project. It certainly is. And now, let's welcome Pastor Rob. There's a story about a pastor who visited a fourth grade Sunday school class to do a talk about marriage to the little kids. And he started off by asking the class, what does the Bible say about marriage? And immediately one little boy shot his hand up, raised his hand, and the pastor calls on the little boy. And the boy replies, the Bible says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> now, that is funny. And I think it can apply to family as well. The truth is, none of us know what we're doing when it comes to family. Like, none of us have it figured out. There are no perfect families. There's no perfect marriages. Like, all of us have, have some, some issues. All of us have some things that we have to work on. And this series that we're kicking off today is all about the imperfect family, because we all have them. One of the cool things about everyone, whether you go to church or you don't go to church, we all have families. Whether you're a person who has a deep faith in God or you're new to the church scene, we all have families. And all of our families have, have some issues. All of our families are broken. And the reason that all of our families are imperfect is because there are no perfect people. I, I cringe every single time I hear a parent or a grandparent Grandparents are especially guilty of this when they look at a newborn baby and they say he or she is just so perfect Mom and dad. She's just so perfect. That baby is just so perfect. No, he or she ain't perfect That little baby came out of the oven a broken sinful human being They are they are sinful to the core sin and selfishness is literally embedded into the very DNA of every single human baby. That cute baby is a dirty, rotten sinner. And as much as we love babies and as great and cute as they are, we, we didn't have to teach babies or teach kids how to be selfish. We didn't. It's wired into their DNA. You don't have to teach a baby how, how to steal, how to lie. You don't have to teach a baby how to say, that's not fair. I guess when they talk more like a kid. You don't have to teach a kid how to say, that's not fair. You don't have to teach kids to, to be selfish or, or to grab onto things. Like You don't have to teach any of that. It's literally wired inside of them. All of us as human beings, all of us as human beings are born broken. Now, let me, let me tell you this. Every baby that's born has potential to do great things. Every baby that's born has potential for greatness. But at the exact same time, every baby that's born is going to be tempted by selfishness for his or her entire life. All of us are. None of us escape brokenness. None of us escape the fact that we all have our, our, our own issues. There are no perfect people, people. Therefore, there are no perfect families. Every picture-perfect family has a behind-the-scenes. And that behind the scenes is never as great as the highlight reel. If you look at people online and you look at people, especially on Instagram, and you think that couple has it all together, that family has it all together, can I just promise you there is a behind the scenes and they struggle with things that you don't know about. Uh, when, when, my, when my twins were, were first born, uh, we would take them to picture people. Uh, you remember back in the day when we go to the mall, and in the mall they had picture people, and, and uh, there was, um, it was just this place to like take pictures as families, and sometimes they had props or, or things. And so my wife would prioritize picture people, especially around the holidays. We would go during special holidays, and 
Uh, these pictures were a big hit for our family, but they were a big hit on Facebook. Facebook loved these pictures. Every time we went, we would show these pictures, and the pictures turned out amazing. And I want to just reminisce. If you would just humor me and let me reminisce for just a second. Uh, my twins are now nine years old, going on 10, but I just want to go back years ago to these early days when we went to picture people. And just I want to just show you some of these pictures. They, they, they turned out great. Here's, here's one of my favorites. Uh, this was around Christmas time, and uh, someone had bought us uh, Kobe Bryant Lakers onesie, uh, like jerseys. And so we dressed them in that. They had uh, my Lakers stocking and a basketball. Man, they are just so squishy and, and like cute. Like I love, I love, love them back back then. I love them today, but they were just so squishy and cute. Well, the first couple of times that my wife and I took the kids to picture people. Uh, we just did it ourselves. It was just the four of us. And so we would go and we would have, you know, their, their little outfits and, and sometimes there was props or backdrops or whatever. And can I just tell you that even though the pictures turned out amazing, it was so much work. Like to get one or two pictures where they were smiling and looking at the camera, I would leave every time exhausted. Like, like I just ran a marathon exhausted. Like slap tired, I need a nap for at least 24 hours before I can function exhausted. We were so, so tired. You had to deal with one kid screaming and then the other kid would scream. They would squirm. They, they wouldn't look at the camera. Um, they would have a diaper blowout and then we'd have to change outfits. And, and sometimes my wife brought multiple outfits to try to celebrate the occasion. It was so much work. It was so much a hey, go, 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 like trying to get their attention. Like I'm literally dripping in sweat to try to get them to smile. And so after a few times, we kind of learned that it just was too hard and we needed an army. We needed help with this. So we started recruiting friends. And I want to show you this next one. This next one was for Valentine's Day. This picture turned out absolutely amazing. They uh, look super cute. They both look happy. But there were at least three of our friends in, uh, in picture people at this moment. And we were in the front window. Like uh, if you remember picture people, they set up the front like, like the zoo. Like there's this glass that separated you from the mall walkers and they could like watch you. And like people would like watch us like, like we were entertainment, like a zoo. And it's me and my wife and three of our friends. And the reason I said I think it was three is because I'm pretty sure a couple of our other friends ended up walking past us and seeing this and they came in to try to help. It literally took an army of people to try to get this cute picture. I want to show you uh, one more because this one is my favorite. This one was uh, from Halloween. And uh, let me just show you the picture. It'll pop up on the screen for you. Um, this is a miracle that it even looks like Hayden was smiling because he's not smiling. And if you look close enough, you can see a tear coming down his, his cheek. And my daughter Reese in the Elmo, she's like raising her hand like, get me out of here. This is horrible. They screamed and cried the entire time. And this was the best picture that we could get. And I just tell you that, I tell you that, that even though those pictures turn out amazing and they're a lot of fun and we're so glad that we have them part of our memory, there was a behind the scenes. Every picture perfect family has a behind the scenes. My family isn't perfect. So why am I talking about family? Like I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all the answers. I do though think that we have a great family and I think that we've learned some things and I think that we have uh, not just good, I think we have great family dynamics uh, in multiple layers, both with, with in-laws and parents and, and siblings and now kids. And I think there's multiple layers where we, we do some things really well. In fact, um, in this series, it's going to be a very practical series for you. Uh, in this series, I'm actually going to bring in some friends to, to help us because I don't know everything about family and I don't have it all figured out. And we're going to talk about some things like finances in the family and we're going to talk about blended families or the difficulties of, of, of that. And we're going to talk about, we're going to cover a whole, whole bunch of stuff. In fact, this is just a quick side note. Would you please do me a favor and invite someone to join you during this series? Because something that we all have in common is family. And if you know someone who's maybe looking for a new church or you know someone who, who may be struggling in family or someone that's just wanting to grow in their family, we are going to be as practical as we possibly can because our goal is just to help people because I really believe that America gets better when the family gets better. And I believe it. I believe our society gets better when the family gets better. And so we're going to spend some time trying to be as practical as we possibly can. But on week one... I want to talk about something that I am convinced has helped my family find success. We're not perfect. We have our own issues, and you'll hear about some of our struggles in family. But there is one thing that I am convinced has helped my family find success. 
And I want to talk about that one thing. I want to encourage and inspire and motivate you to adopt this one thing for your family as well. In fact, that's our big idea for today. If you're taking notes, which I encourage you to do, uh, write this down or take a picture of the screen. The big idea is a Christian family begins and ends with each member's personal commitment to God. A Christian family begins and ends with each person's personal commitment to God. The reason, the reason that God is so important to the family is because each person is broken. And the truth is, no one else can complete you. No one else can make you whole. Two imperfectly broken people do not make one whole person. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Jerry Maguire, but uh, it is a, 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 it's a film that has a lot of classic lines in it. Um, lines like, show me the money, and like, uh, it went on to win an Academy Award, and like, a, a lot of people quote, quoted this movie, at least they did back, back when it was, was a little bit newer. Um, but arguably the most famous line from that movie is a line that happens near the end. And if you've never seen the movie, I'll try not to spoil too much of it for you, but in the movie, uh, Jerry Maguire and his wife um, have become estranged, that they've, they, they've separated, they broke up, and he comes busting into to their house while she is at like a, a divorce uh, recovery, divorce care, like women who have been divorced, it's like a support group. And uh, he gives a speech that has become an iconic uh, speech in, in movie history. And I, I want you to, to check this out. We live in a cynical world, a cynical world. And we work in a business of tough competitors. I love you. You complete me. And I'm just Just shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. I I absolutely love that line. It is such it is such a classic line. You complete me. It's an amazing line to, to, to make, make a movie. It's an amazing line for Hollywood. It's an amazing line for entertainment, but it's so wrong. It is wrong. It is incorrect. It's a great line for a movie, but in real life, it doesn't work. Every person is broken. Therefore, another human being cannot complete you because everyone is broken. Imagine with me, if you will, just for a second, if you take two broken pieces of pottery, right? They both have some nice things about them. They both have some good in them, but there's a chip out of both of them. Both have some brokenness. If you take those two separate pieces of broken pottery and you try to put them together to make one whole pottery, they won't work. They don't fit. This piece of pottery has different brokenness than this one. And so when you try to compete them together, it doesn't make one whole piece. And in the same way, human beings were not wired to complete one another. We just can't. We're too imperfect. We're too selfish. We're too broken. Everyone has their own brokenness. And this is why family is so difficult. Family is so difficult because we're broken, kids are broken, parents are broken, husband, wife broken, everyone is broken, and yet we're trying to be whole. And so often, we try to find our wholeness from the members of our family. But this is why Jesus is so important to the family. Jesus is the only perfect person ever to live. And that's why our big idea for today is a Christian family begins and ends with each member's personal commitment to God. And I want to show you this through, through our scripture. At Next Level, we honor the text, and uh, we do that through our online service by reading it nice and loud. And then when we get to the reference, we have a little bit of fun. You'll see the reference is Colossians 2.10. And when we get there and we see the two dots between the two and the ten, we like to pump our fists and say dot, dot. And I want to invite you to read this with me wherever you're watching this at, nice and loud. It says, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Colossians 2, dot, dot, 10. Now that we've read the text, let's go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Uh, God, we come before you, 
and there are so many dynamics with family. There are, are people watching who have had toxic and incredibly broken families. There are people watching who are struggling right now because of brokenness in family. God, there are people right now who uh, have good families, but God, they could be even better if, if they would put you first. And so we ask, God, that no matter where we're coming from in the family, whether it's good or whether it's just okay or whether it's broken, that God, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and help us to hear what you want us to do and give us the courage to obey you even when we're scared. And God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I've already said this, but it is foundational for you to understand what we're going through in this series and ultimately what I'm going through today. The foundation of this series is that all humans are born broken. We're all imperfect. All of us are. And two broken, imperfect people don't make one whole person. The only way to find wholeness is to find your wholeness through something perfect, which is Jesus. And when you find your wholeness and someone else finds their wholeness, then you can become whole together. But it only starts when you admit that you're broken and you come before Jesus and allow him, him to work in you. Uh, if, if you are new to the church scene or you're not a believer in Jesus or, or even if you are, I want you to know I don't think that I'm any better than you. Um, I, I just know that my family has benefited greatly because each of us have made a commitment for Jesus. Uh, my mom didn't grow up going to church. She didn't grow up in a Christian family. In fact, her family was very dysfunctional in, in their relationships. My mom, though, as a little girl, got invited to go to church and started going to church and, and, and found Jesus. And when, when she grew up and it got time to start a family, she looked to marry a, another Christian. And she met my dad in college, and they both were Christians. My dad did grow up in a Christian household, and they raised me and my, my brother and my sister. They raised us in a Christian house. We weren't perfect. We had our own arguments and fights, had our own issues. But my parents prioritized church every single Sunday, and they prioritized a relationship with God. My, my wife, though, she didn't grow up in a Christian household. Um, she has great parents that, that are, are very loving and supportive of us. But she wasn't raised in, in a house that, that prioritized church every, every week or, or, or even uh, you know, believed in God in the same way that we do. And so even though there was a lot of good in her family, there was also some dysfunction and brokenness that she didn't learn how to have a Christian family until she went away to college. And she moved in and lived with a, a Christian family that had kids and she saw it modeled how we're supposed to treat one another, how husbands and wives are supposed to treat one another and, and how, how godly parents treat their kids. And, and it, her life was changed by seeing it modeled by a, a Christian family. And so then when we got married, we committed to raise a Christian family, to raise kids that were a part of the church and raise kids that love Jesus to the best, best of our ability. And we're not perfect, but I'm telling you that we have become a healthy and whole family, and we continue to be a healthy and whole family when each one of us prioritizes our relationship with Jesus and allows Him to work in us. And I want to show you why this is so important. I want to show you this through our text. Our text is written by the Apostle Paul, and uh, he is a primetime player in the Scriptures. He wrote over half of the New Testament. We talk about him a lot because he is the one that really gives us instructions on how to live this Christian life. And look at what he says in Colossians 2, 6-7. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. This is so important to us because if you believe in Jesus, that's great. But Paul says that's the starting point that you believe in Jesus, that that would mean you're not an atheist, right? An atheist is someone that doesn't believe God exists. You're not an agnostic. An agnostic believes there's a higher power, but we can't know it. You're not a Buddhist. You're not a Muslim. You're, you, if you are a Christian, then you would say, hey, I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. I believe that Jesus is God's son who, who lived a perfect life and died on a cross and three days later rose again. I believe in Jesus. That is awesome and amazing. That's the starting point of our faith. But Paul says that we must continue to follow him. That we don't just get saved and then say, oh, that's great, I got a ticket to heaven. We continue to follow him. And the way that we follow him, Paul says, is to let your life be built on him. Let your life be built on him. That's our foundation. 
the foundation for Christians is not money, it's not success, it's not power, it's not even happiness. Our foundation is Jesus. And that's why we want to prioritize everything around him. Uh, this verse actually echoes the words that Jesus said. If you grew up in the church, maybe you're, you're familiar with this, but I want to show you what, what Jesus said in his own words. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. There's that word. Its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. So Jesus would say, it's great that you believe. That's awesome. But, but really where the growth comes is when you prioritize your life around living for Jesus. That is the, the foundation of our faith. Our foundation is that ultimately our happiness comes not from another person, but from Jesus. Ultimately, our worth comes not from our own success, but from Jesus. Ultimately, who we are, our identity is not built in what we do. It's built in Jesus. That is our foundation. And it's so important because Jesus says the storms of life will come. They will come. No one escapes storms. No one does. All of us go through difficulties of life and way too many people wait until the storm comes and their foundation is ripped from them and then they run to Jesus and say, hey, clean up the mess. And God allows that. God, God will welcome that. He just wants people to come to him. But can I just tell you that when the storms come, you survive them a lot better if you have a foundation that's going to stand firm. And the strongest foundation there is, the only foundation that can withstand every storm is Jesus. Everyone is going to struggle. Everyone is going to struggle with something in life. Everyone is. Every family is going to struggle. Everyone's going to have some issues. Even if you feel like you're a great family, at some point, something is going to come. Maybe it's the death of a parent that came too soon. Maybe it'll be cancer. Maybe it will be a curveball that you didn't see coming where someone breaks up the relationship or does something to harm the family. And I pray that none of us have to go through difficult seasons, but my life experience tells me that we all do. And so when the storms of life come, have you built a foundation around something that cannot be destroyed? If your foundation is another human being, you will constantly live in disappointment. No human can withstand all the storms of life. No human can meet every single one of your needs. No human can, can, can match you perfectly where you are. No human can complete you. Wives, stop putting pressure on your husbands to be the missing piece to your emotional needs. They can't do it. Find your emotional needs met through Jesus and then allow your husband to be who God created him to be and watch what happens. Husbands, stop putting this pressure on your wife to be something that she is not. Prioritize her. Put her first. Why does following Jesus help you do that? Because dudes, we are selfish human beings who all we do is think about ourselves. But when you follow Jesus, it causes you to think about others and to put others first. And if you want to become a better, more attentive dad, if you want to become a better, more attentive husband, prioritize Jesus. It just, it just puts everything else into place. The best thing for a husband or wife to do is to find their own identity in Jesus. And listen, if you're watching this and you're not a husband and wife, then you are a kid. Even if you're a grown kid, you're a kid. And can I just tell you, can I just talk to you just for a second? It's hard being a kid. It's hard being a kid because your parents aren't perfect. Can I just tell you, though, it's hard to be a parent. Because we're imperfect, it's hard to parent kids. We don't have all the answers. We don't always know what we're doing. Like most parents are trying to do the best that they can. But because we're broken, there's going to be dysfunction. There's going to be... There's going to be some issues. And so the best thing, if you're a kid, even if you're the grown kid, the best thing for you can, to do in your family is to love Jesus with all your heart. That's the best thing that you can do. To allow Jesus to help you to become whole, to bring healing and wholeness to your family. The best thing you can do is stop pressuring your parents to be perfect and allowing them to destroy your mood because they don't meet every one of your expectations. To find your wholeness in Jesus. Here's, here's some hard truth. It might step on your toes. It's hard to love Jesus with our whole hearts when we only give him an hour on Sunday. It's hard. It's hard for Jesus to be the foundation when we prioritize everything else but Jesus. 
Look at what the scripture goes on to say. Colossians 2, 8 through 9. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Paul says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. I love, I love that wording. Can I just tell you that I'm all for learning? I'm a big fan of learning. I think we need to learn. I think education is incredibly important. I think that reading books is so amazing. Um, We've all, I hope, have agreed at this point that we're all imperfect and we're all um, broken and none of us have it completely figured out. And yet I'm astounded with how many of us jump into a marriage and we've yet to read a book on marriage. I'm astounded at how easy it is to jump into parenting and we haven't even read a book on how to parent. We're not even asking for coaching or help. We're just winging it. We're just hoping that we can do it better and yet we admit we're broken we don't have all the answers we're imperfect it is hard marriage is hard parenting is hard being a kid is hard raising kids is hard all of it all of it is hard and Paul is not saying that we cannot use other resources some of us need to call a Christian counselor to get a little help some of us need to call uh, someone who has, has some great Uh, parenting tips and we need to say, hey, I want to humble myself and ask you for help. Some of us need to call someone and say, hey, I'm struggling in my marriage. Let's have a conversation. Some of us need that that extra coaching. So Paul's not saying that that we shouldn't ever read another book or or gain any extra access to, to anything that helps us. What Paul is saying is that for a Christian, it starts with Jesus. The answer to fix your marriage is not some source outside of Jesus. It's not some, some extra thing. It's not some idea, new, newfangled idea. It's not, it's not another relationship. If your marriage is broken, just know that the next marriage you get into, it will also be broken. Every relationship is broken. And so for Christians, the starting point to help fix our brokenness, to help mend our brokenness, to help bring wholeness, it is, it's Jesus. But the sad truth is, is especially even for Christians, it's just really easy to neglect our relationship with Jesus. I know that 2020 was hard on a lot of people, and uh, it's not a competition for who it was harder on, um, but it just was hard. It was hard for a lot of people, and that, that includes me. Um, I've been married to, to my wife, Monica, for, for 20 years this coming August, and I would say that it's been an amazing marriage. Um, I really pride myself on having a, a good good marriage. And, and I think that we've both done a lot of hard work and, and we've both done, done things to help our marriage be great. But from my standpoint, um, you'd have to ask her to see if she has a different perspective. But from my opinion, 2020 was the hardest year of our marriage. One of the main reasons it was difficult is because our normal schedules were just uprooted. We went from, you know, both working jobs that we love and and juggling the kids and just dealing with the normal stressors to when the pandemic hit, it shut everything down. And like I wasn't allowed to go into church anymore and and, and we didn't have um, public services. It was just an online service and um, they sent her home from school. So like, um, you know, she wasn't in her normal routine and And that was, you know, kind of nice for a little bit to get a a break from the pace. But then we had to figure out how do we rebuild this thing while the pandemic's still going on. And so I had this added stress on me of trying to figure out when do we bring public services back. And she had the added stress on her. She's a teacher. And can I just say this is just a side note. If you know a teacher, especially if you are a parent of a kid, can you please do your best to support teachers? They are under so much stress. Teachers and admin, their job has been so difficult during this season. Some of them are working triple the amount to try to do online, especially if you're in York County, they're doing online and they're doing virtual and in-person teaching. It's just, it's just really hard. And so please pray for teachers. But my wife was juggling all of that as a teacher and I'm juggling what I'm juggling as a pastor. And the stress just, it, it would come home. And we're not a couple who has ever just fought. We've never, we don't name call. We don't yell at each other, but we just had some disconnection. And 2020, it led to some really hard conversations. And it led to some hard conversations that just got harder because we couldn't find a resolve. And we just found there were multiple times where like, we would kind of talk about things, but we didn't find an answer. We, we didn't know how to work through this. Like, we couldn't change our circumstances. And, and like, we weren't connecting, and there, just, there was this difficulty. My, my wife, um, when it all kind of came to a head, um, my wife said that, 
something that she really missed was praying together as a couple. And for 15 years of marriage, every night before we fell asleep, we would pray together. But then our, our kids, uh, you know, and, and, and just life, and it just it got easy to, we didn't intentionally say we're going to stop praying. It just got easy to, to neglect it. So she asked that we start praying together, and so we started trying to work prayer back in together. And then we decided that, you know, in our early days of marriage, we used to prioritize reading a, a Christian book on marriage together or doing a Bible study together, and we had neglected that for a long time. It's easy when, when you feel like you have success, when you do something good, it's easy to neglect it, and that's where we were. We had such a good marriage for so long, it just was easy to neglect doing the things that we knew we were supposed to do. So we started doing, um, at the end of this summer, early fall, we started doing um, a Bible study together through the app U version. And the image is going to come up on the screen just so you can see it. If you don't have this, I highly recommend it. You can download it at the App Store. It is absolutely free. Uh, the emblem says Holy Bible, but it is called U version if you search for it, for, for it in, in the App Store. But we started doing, U version has amazing studies on marriage and, and studies on parenting. And we started doing them together, and so I do it for, by myself. She does it by herself on her own time. But at the end of the study, when you do it together, there's a question that you can ask, and you answer it. And so we get to see each other's answers. And so even on busy days where we don't get a chance to talk, um, I get to see what she's learning and what she's thinking. And it's, we could not figure out how to fix our disconnectedness. But yet it was amazing that when we started to prioritize and put God as a part of things, the disconnectedness just kind of went away. And we found that there was no like magic solution. There was no like instant like light bulb moment where it's like, oh, all, everything's gone away. Like we, we just started connecting more and we connected more. I'm convinced because we did what we were supposed to do. We did what we used to do in the early days, which was prioritize, prioritize God. And that's why our big idea today is a Christian family begins and ends with each member's personal commitment to God. I can't stress this enough. Two broken people do not make a whole marriage. Two whole people make a whole marriage. Adding a broken child to the mix, it's not going to fix things. I hear couples say, hey, we're struggling in marriage. We just need a kid. No, you don't. That kid is not going to fix two broken people. It's just going to add to the complexity of it. Kids don't fix things because kids are born broken. Like The key is to walk with God, to follow God, to obey God, and allow Him to complete the brokenness. Let Him to do some healing. And that takes us to our theme verse for today, Colossians 2.10. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. That is that, that God came in the form of a human, in through His Son Jesus. That Jesus wasn't just a good man, He was God. This next part is underlined. Would you humor me and just read it out loud wherever you're watching this at? So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. I love what Paul does there. Paul says that you are complete in Christ. You're not complete with another person. You're not complete by having the perfect job. You're not complete by finding more money or having more money or popularity or fame. None of that stuff can complete you. The only thing that completes us is our union with Christ. It is our relationship with Jesus. It's receiving Him and living for Him. So that takes us to today's win. And today's win is what we do with all this. And I want you just to reflectively look. I know that your family has your own issues and it's easy to point the finger and say, hey, if they would change, if they would fix this. But just as today, what I want you to focus on, is there an area in your life that you've slacked spiritually? Is there an area of your life that you've not prioritized God? Starting today, would you prioritize God first? And it may not be a quick fix, it may not be instant, but would you just start prioritizing God? Would you just go back to the foundation? And maybe you've been a Christian for a long time and it's just easy to slack on some of the things. Would you just go back and do the things that you once did? It's really hard to have a relationship with God if you just see Him one time a week on Sundays. So would you prioritize Him? Spend some time praying, reading, and if you need help, resources with that, um, we want to help you. We want to be a part of that. Because I really do believe, I really do believe with all my heart that the foundation of a healthy family is Jesus. Will you pray with me? God, we come before you and we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your love for us and for um, just the way that you 
point us to you and direct us to you. And God, we just admit that every single one of us has brokenness. Every single one of us has imperfections and issues that we're dealing with. So would you help us? God, would you help us to do what we can't do on our own? Would you help us to prioritize you? God, we just ask that you would do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine in this series and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we are so glad that you chose to gather around your computer, your tablet, your smartphone, or whatever you use to participate in Next Level Online. Before you go, I'd like to send some invitations to you. First, if you have never taken the opportunity to place your faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, we would love to invite you to take that next step. If you will text the word FAITH to the number on your screen, someone from our team will be in touch with you in order to talk further about your next steps of salvation and answer any questions that you may have about what it means to begin a relationship with Jesus. Second, if you have been blessed by the ministry of Next Level Church, we would like to invite you to become a financial partner. When you give, you are enabling us to reach people with the good news of Jesus right here in the 757 and beyond. And together, we're able to lead people to love Jesus, love people, and make a difference. In order to give, you can follow the link in the chat or you can text the key phrase, Next Level Give, to 77977 where you'll be able to give in a minute or less. Well, until we meet again next week, be sure to like, follow, and share about Next Level on social media. Also, don't forget to invite friends, family, neighbors, and coworkers to join us for week two of our Imperfect Family series. We hope that you have a great week.